What is up you guys and welcome back. So this morning I got up pretty early, loaded the truck, stopped by Buggies on the way to the water, threw a little bit of gas in it, and then hopped back on the road and made my way down to the Texas City Dyke. Now the wind was predicted to be blowing about 3 to 4, but I usually try not to get my hopes up because it is never as good as they say it's going to be. But as soon as I cleared the top of Skyline Drive, I was super impressed. This was actually one of those rare occasions where the wind forecast was spot on. I mean, just look at how glassed off it was. My plan today was to do a little bit of wading around Mosquito Island, which is located not too far from the base of the dike. As soon as I pulled up, I hopped out, took a look around, and noticed there was only about three people out there, which is not too bad because this place gets way too crowded at times. This made me super excited to get in the water, so I quickly threw my gear on and made my way to the end of the island. Now I was having some audio trouble on the GoPro so that's kind of why I'm doing this whole voiceover thing. I hope y'all don't mind too much and I was also having trouble with my bait caster so that's why I'm stuck with my spinning reel for this video. This is just like a cheap $20 spinning reel and then a just basic fishing tackle unlimited rod but it does get the job done. And now usually whenever I throw artificial I like to stick to my bait caster and then if I'm throwing a popping cork or whatnot I'll use my spinning reel. But today for the majority of the video I was just using a 1 4 ounce jig head with a variety of different colored soft plastics. I had like a pearl one, a bone diamond color, a plum down south, and I believe one other. And I also switched up to a spoon for a little while later in the video, but that didn't produce much. So as the morning progressed, I just kept on slinging these lures out there and varying up my retrieves, working them a little bit faster and a little bit slower, just trying to figure out what the fish wanted, but they were not interested in anything. I did get a few bites here and there, but couldn't seem to connect on any of them, although I did manage to snag a croaker. So I decided to take this croaker and just stick them right on the jig head because I did not have any chatter weights or croaker hooks or anything like that. Just put them straight on the jig head, cast them out there, and he actually got picked up twice within about a minute. But just like before, I could not manage to hook into anything, as you'll see right here. Much to my surprise though, he was still on the hook after being bit twice. So I reeled him in, I rehooked him here, and he wasn't looking too good guys. He had bite marks all in him, uh, pretty chewed up, and probably pretty close to dying. But I switched around the hook a little bit so there was no fins in the way, and then sent him back out there one last time, hoping that something would just come by and just eat him to put him out of his misery to be honest. And y'all check out what happened next. As y'all just saw, I gave the croaker a couple pops and then he got picked up almost instantly and it ended up being a nice keeper trout, just about 17 inches. So I fought him out, got him in the net, and then went ahead and threw him right onto the stinky pants stringer because this guy was going home for dinner. So after catching that trout, I put my lure back on and at this point I was honestly just trying to snag another croaker so I could do the same thing all over again. I kept fishing for about another hour but with no success. I 
finally decided to just wrap it up so I could head back to the house and do the cleaning and cooking part of this video. So speckled trout are probably the easiest fish to clean that we have in shore here out of the big three, which would be redfish, flounder, and trout. Uh, I've showed this in a bunch of videos before, but if you haven't seen them, all you do is go at an angle right behind the gill plate and then just make one cut all the way down to the tail and it knocks off the side just like that. They do have a swim bladder that you have to go up and around sometimes because it's pretty hard to cut through. And also every once in a while you'll get stuck on the rib bones just like right here. You can see in the beginning on this side, I kind of had to push through a little bit harder. But other than that, super simple, just two cuts on each side and you're done. And then all you got to do is take the skin off. So taking the skin off is pretty straightforward. You just make one cut straight down to the skin, turn the knife flush with whatever surface you're using to clean your fish. In this instance, it is the lid to a cooler. And then you just pull the skin with your left hand while kind of moving that knife back and forth with your right hand. After that, all you gotta do is take your rib bones out. So you can feel around with your finger to make sure that you get them all, but you just make a nice little cut and then go ahead and rip them out. And that should pull all the remaining ones right off of there. So you're left with no bones. And that right there is two perfect speckled trout fillets. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and head into the kitchen. And today we're actually gonna be making fish cakes or fish patties, fish burgers, whatever you wanna call them. And the first step to that is to dice up your fish into little bitty pieces. All right, so I went ahead and sped this part up so y'all didn't have to sit through the whole thing, but basically after you get them diced up just like this, the next step is to go ahead and cut them up even more. And it's okay if they get mashed up, it doesn't really matter because like I said, they're going into a patty. So honestly, they doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so once you get your fish chopped up how you want it, the next step is to go ahead and throw it into a bowl because we're gonna start adding all the other ingredients. Now this is a super simple recipe. It only has four ingredients total, and one of them being the fish. Other than that, you're just gonna need an egg, some type of cracker or breadcrumbs. I didn't have breadcrumbs, so I used Ritz crackers and just mashed them up, as you're gonna see in just a second here. And then just some seasoning, whatever you want. I use Cajun seasoning just because I found some that I really like lately and I've been using it in all of my fish recipes. So the amount of breadcrumbs you use obviously depends on the amount of fish you have. I started with four crackers, but I think I actually ended up using around 10 or 11. It's just important to remember that you can always add more, but you can't take it out. As you add the crumbs and stir it all up, you'll begin to notice that the fish starts to stick together. And this part is all based on feel. So once you think you're able to form a patty out of it, that's how you know you're done. Once you get to the right consistency, it's time to make the patties. From here it becomes hands-on. I like to start by mashing the fish together a little bit just to make sure it'll stick. So the size that you make the patties doesn't really matter. It's all just personal preference, but I like to make mine around the same size as a hamburger. I should also note that it is pretty important that you squeeze them and press them together tightly as you can see in the video right there. And this is just to ensure that they don't fall apart once you put them in the pan. Once you get them made, they should look something like this. And then all you have to do is throw a little bit of seasoning on them and then toss them in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes and this will allow them to set. Once enough time has gone by, go ahead and throw some oil in your pan and make sure it has a nice thin layer coating the whole entire bottom. And then you just go straight in with the fish cakes. So after a couple minutes, you're going to want to go ahead and flip them over. And right now we're just trying to get a nice crust on both sides. After you get a good sear on both sides, I just like to go ahead and throw the lid on there. And this is going to make sure that the fish cooks all the way through. And yes, I know this is not the right lid for the pan, but it will work. It only takes about four or five minutes and then it should be done. And 
boom just like that there is our finished product now i did make a little sauce and put it on top of them uh, you can use the tartar sauce if you want mine is just mayonnaise mustard and sweet relish and it is absolutely amazing i highly recommend trying it so we're just gonna go ahead cut them up show you what it looks like on the inside right here and uh, i already tell you right now these things were delicious and that is actually going to do it for the video today, guys. I know it was a little bit different with the whole voiceover thing, but I hope y'all enjoyed anyways. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you are, thank you guys so much. And like always, until next time, peace.